Uh, hi folks, Ivan here from Clarity. Um, last week we kind of looked at uh, white papers from a high level and discussed how they can be kind of part of your um, your marketing arsenal. Uh, let's let's look at a few examples of, of good white papers, and you know, let's look and see what what works in them, what what we like, what we can use ourselves, and um, and also one or two things that maybe we should try to avoid. So let's kind of get into it. Um, I and mean, here's a nice kind of introduction to a white paper from Accenture and you know what's nice in it is that you, the table of contents is is well presented it's quite clear the headings are very very good for the chapters um, if you look there the page count is only f 11 pages so white papers can be quite short and um, something else I really like about this is the um, on the second page the way they've presented the data and those tables it, it really complements the, um, the text above it. I think you probably find in a lot of white papers that you know after four or five pages you find yourself getting a bit tired, fatigue kicks in because it's, it's just so much effort to, um, to 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 kind of absorb all the data. And Accenture um, their white papers are probably for me anyway at least at least um, some of the best that you get out there. So they're worth studying. One small thing is that for on the second page they have um, end notes for all the different figures. And it's nice because you can kind of scan through the document, look at the different figures, and, and click um, through those. I mean, we discussed yesterday about who we're writing for. They're essentially decision makers. They're, you know, usually experts, but they may not be technical. Um, but the one thing they have in common is that they're in a hurry. Um, they're looking for a pressing issue that they have. So they're probably scanning many, many white papers, reading through those. So bear that in mind when, when you're reading yours, or sorry, writing yours. It may take you several weeks to write it. But they actually, they may only give it five minutes. Here's the introduction. It's the same Accenture white paper, by the way. And I think what's good about it is that you only have one, two, three, four, five, six different paragraphs. And each one is, is quite sharp. It's distinct. It's to the point. And it, it helps kind of um, frame what's going to come next. So again, think about that. They call it a forward. You can call it an executive summary. It's the same thing. But again, try to, try to create something um, that that helps orientate the reader before they get into it. Okay, so again, we talked about the idea of trying to solve problems and making recommendations. I I put this in to kind of contrast it with the previous one for a few reasons. It's about Facebook page analytics. It's not by Facebook, by the way. But um, a few things. One, it's that um, it's actually quite hard to read. I mean, they're using a kind of grayish um, font color, which is just hard on the eyes, you know. And um, you've, with two kind of meaty uh, paragraphs there, it, it's actually hard to, to, to read it. So, you know, it's something to bear in mind when you are writing your white paper is to be generous with the font size, you know, accept that, you know, it, that the people reading it may not have the same, you know, a strong eyesight as you have, for example. Um, I use um, usually a size 12 font and always use black. Well, if, if, if possible, always use black. Um, let's look at how people can be, um, not so much persuaded, but I guess influenced by the way you, you present the white paper. And this is a good example. I think it's from Samsung and it is, it's a, it's a technical white paper. And what's nice about it is that, you know, it's, it's very, very easy to read. They've, they've pulled things out quite clearly. Um, it's obviously for a technical readership, but it, the, the bullet points allow you to, to, to scan things relatively quickly. There also there's a kind of nice use of white space in the in the document. So again, all those things kind of help the reader. You help kind of pull them in. Um, you're on their side essentially. Um, in other tutorials, we looked at the, the kind of language to use and how to make it use the active voice to use positive phrasing. But at the same time, you want to mm, to contrast the possible risks with the possible benefits. So. That's something to, to consider here. This is a nice touch from, it's a UK government white paper, which are different than the um, technology ones, but I, I, I deliberately put it in because one of the nice things is that each paragraph is numbered, 1.1, 1.2, and so on and so forth. And the reason for it is that it's easier for people then to, to quote the exact you know part in a document they're referring to. They can say chapter three, section 1.4, or something like that. And again, it's relatively easy to read the sections are broke out quite quite um, quite easily. Um, we spoke a little bit about how you need to orientate the reader, and 
what that means is that you need to kind of put things in context. And again, this is a, a, another UK government white paper, and it starts by doing that. It, it discusses the, the, the issue of the moment, and then it kind of leads you through um, the, the different barriers facing people, possible solutions, and then it makes recommendations. Um, something that's a little bit different these days about white papers, I think, is um, I'm beginning to see people are putting hashtags and um, Twitter handles on the cover sheet of their white paper. So it's something to consider. It, it doesn't apply to everything. Um, but this white paper in particular, you know, it's, it's about open data. It's about transparency. And the government is making efforts to, to connect with citizens. So it's putting Twitter handles and hashtags on, on the cover sheet. Again, something to, to think about. Um, all those three points here, the idea that you need to, to be interesting, build credibility and authority, I mean, they're your kind of overarching goals. And one nice touch, if you look at this white paper here, is that they have a sidebar on the right. And the sidebar kind of, it pulls out what's been discussed in the main flow of the document. And sidebars are quite nice because it allows you to kind of, you know, uh, to identify and isolate little points that the reader can pick up on and, and can, can, can glance at. And I find that having a nice balance between the narrative and things in the sidebar, it, it, it helps the reader because if you want to sprinkle, say, things like statistics and facts and quotes and so forth, it's nice if you put it in the sidebar. And if you notice here, what they've done is the background color of the sidebar is a, a different shade of light blue. So it just kind of, it stands off the page a little bit and, and without being too too distracting from the, the main narrative flow. Um, as regards the structure, we talked about the context. Um, the scope means that if you're writing, say, a technology white paper, you may want to say up front or a scientific one, for example, if something is out of scope and then explain your approach to, to how you investigated the area and then your recommendation. Uh, a nice touch from this document is that as you're kind of progressing through it, they have this roadmap kind of graphic at the top, and it, it, it it's color coded so it, it works with you with you as you go through it. And again, it, it's a nice touch. It's not too distracting, and it gives a sense of um, of progression as you're moving forward. So all these little things kind of help the reader um, get pulled into it. Um, it helps to to make them feel more engaged, and you know. When you're writing your white paper, you really need to think that it's not that you have one single type of reader. Potentially, you have many readers of your white paper, and they all have different um, pressing needs. So the thing about standing over everything is that if you do make any claims in your white paper, rather than saying, for example, the classic mistake people often make is saying, you know, it's now well known that, or everybody knows, or research shows, but you need to... to site where you've got that data from and prof you know i'd recommend putting an end note in your document to back it up um the whole idea of one idea per paragraph you know it's no chestnut when it comes to business writing but it really does stand up try to isolate one idea per paragraph don't mix messages and that really does help the reader and subheadings as we saw earlier on uh, it breaks up the flow of the document um some nice touches here in the executive summary this is from a Swiss banking um, white paper, and um, again, it's easy to read. You know, they've they've put a few bullet points up front. They orientate you as you work your way down on the third and fourth paragraph. They just identify the first objective of the report and the second objective, and the conclusions. So it's very easy for you as a reader to to zero in and find out what they're discussing. Um, as regards the writing style, you know. If you look at the examples we've given so far, for the most part, they're not very pretentious. They don't. They're not very wordy. They um, they don't try to use buzzwords to to, make, to try and sound trendy or hip. But the main thing they do is to try to connect ideas, put the the conclusion, the main thing, the bottom line at the start of the document, so you don't have to work your way through it. And they they write to be scanned in the sense that as more and more white papers are, you know, will be published on the internet, or you want to put them on your own website. Consider search engines, so using things like subheadings and so forth, um, that, that helps things stand out. Um, a nice touch here, I wanted I put it in, is that if you look at the bottom part of it, it says how to cite this report. And that's nice because if you're writing a white paper that you think, 
other people will quote, you want to put up up front who the authors are and what's the official name of the document. And those are the kind of small things that help people, um, makes it easier for people quoting your document. So kind of work backwards and think, if people read my document, how would they quote it? How would they cite it and so on and so forth? Um, as regards the length of the white papers, sorry, this is mostly to do with the um, the executive summary, which, you know, one or two pages is fine. It, it should be enough for them to make a decision. And if it's a very long document, then consider making it around 5 or 10%. So that's, our, that's the executive summary, not the length of the white paper itself. This is the length of the white paper, and it's a Google white paper, which is only six pages. So it just goes to show that, you know, they don't all need to be massive 30, 40, 50 page um, documents. If you can distill it down to, to six pages, 10 pages, 15 pages, the main thing is that you provide sufficient information in it for the reader to make a decision. So these are the kind of things we'll discuss later on, um, good writing practices. As regards charts and images, if you are going to use them, add value. Avoid, you know, just putting in eye candy. But the, the main thing is to help help the reader understand concepts and show relationships between things. And these are some nice examples of, of tables and charts that are, are not so much easy on the eye, but they, they're of real use to the person reading the document. Because if you read the earlier section, they illustrate what's been discussed in a nice way. So it's it's important to, to balance the image and text ratio, otherwise people just get, get tired. So consider that. A nice little pie chart here. Um, same thing. Um, as regards differentiating your white paper, you know, one thing I try to do is to to before I write it is look at what my competitors are writing and then see, you know, what do they use, what makes it so compelling, how can I improve on what, what they're doing and um, uh, basically try to make it more um, more interesting for the readers. Um, another thing to consider is that for a lot of white papers you're your readers are a kind of an investor in a sense. They're, they're investing their time, they're investing their energy, and if they're going to share it with someone else too as well, they're making recommendations. So, you know, try to think of your readers as potential investors, emotionally, uh, intellectually, and possibly financially. So the takeaways is that don't write your white paper in a hurry. Assume you're going to need to do two, three, four, maybe even five drafts, depending on the length of it. Um, uh, put in as many facts as you can to back up all your claims and to make it remarkable in the sense that people can remark about it. They can kind of go, hey, did you read a white paper? You really have to. Let me share it with you. Revise in many, many ways. Don't do one revision, um, especially if you're doing um, team-based white paper writing. And then when you're finished, don't just leave it sitting there. Um, make sure to promote it. Make sure to share it. Make sure to, to email technology journalists and say that you've published something. And that then kind of... Um, that's encouraging then for you to go and write more white papers and to, to kind of establish more momentum in a particular area. Here's a nice touch. It's the conclusion to a white paper. And instead of kind of, you know, trying to blow their own trumpet, they've put in a few quotes from other people. And it's just a nice way of reinforcing what they've said in the document. Because in many cases, if something's relatively long, and this one was actually, um, people will jump to the conclusion, the final part, um, before they go back and read it all the way through. So that whole idea of on the sidebar putting in um, quotes from people works quite well. So those are a few kind of examples of good white papers and kind of best practices. Um, in the next few, tu few tutorials, we'll probably drill down to different sections of it, like how to format it, how to write it, how to structure it, and then how to to promote it on, um, on, on the internet and social media to raise awareness for yourself. So that's it. If you enjoyed it, please. Give us a tweet, like, and remember to subscribe to the channel. Um, speak to you soon. Bye-bye.